Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We've talked a lot this past several months about how the world has changed, and we're going to be focusing during the time of Lent, especially on our Sundays, on how Jesus himself changed the world. And today, drawing from the second lesson, Jesus changed the world by becoming something that he was not, by becoming sin for us on our behalf. I've often wondered whether the sermon on Ash Wednesday is something of an add-on. Think about it with me just a little bit. We come, we receive the ashes on our forehead, a sign of our mortality. We remember that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. We hear words of forgiveness, and so I declare to you, your sins have been forgiven by Christ. We remember with the sign of the cross how, with the sign of the cross also, we were marked as Christ's own, the sign of the cross both upon our forehead and on our hearts where it wasn't with ashes that we were marked, but with the cleansing water and the word at our baptism. There's a lot that goes into partaking of these actions on this day, and it's powerful. So why add words to all of those actions? Even more than that, we will be coming to the table that our Lord sets before us, He invites us to come so that we can eat and drink and be his guests there. People who are frail, sinful, who are dust, to eat at the table of the eternal one. Where not only does he give us something spiritual to eat, but truly gives us his very body and blood so that we might feast with him and receive him in the feast. And so that we might carry him with us wherever we go. Those are powerful actions. Why add words to those? And what can words add to all of that? That's what the preacher begins to think as they get a little unnerved thinking about Ash Wednesday. Someone was telling me too, he said that, It's so dark on Ash Wednesday to think of our death, but then we remember the cross and how Jesus tasted death on our behalf. And then that takes us beyond chest words. Even as we consider what God's word says, God's words speak of Jesus' action. Jesus was a man of action, true God and true man who came to act on our behalf, to do what you and I could never do. He comes so that he might take our sin upon himself and bear the full weight of it at the cross, and so that he might give us his righteousness. The words of the second lesson today, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Powerful words, powerful actions on the part of our Lord. He comes and he takes on something that was never his. Now, you and I have seen when somebody takes on a a duty or a role that maybe is not theirs, And maybe you've been in a work environment or office environment where someone begins to overfunction just a little bit. And you think to yourself, you know, if they would stay in their lane, then the rest of us could get done what we need to get done. Have any of you ever experienced that? There are times when you and I want to overfunction, we want to fix things for people. We have people that we love in our lives and we long to fix whatever they might be going through whether it be an illness that we can't control, but we want to make sure that they get to the right doctor so that they get the right treatments, so that they get the right outcomes. Or you and I might try uh, even to suggest, without being knowledgeable, 
have you tried this? Have you tried that? But Jesus is one to whom all lanes belong. He came to walk this road for you and for me. To become something that he was not. To be sin for us. So that he could make you and me something that we could never become apart from him. The very righteousness of God. And without rehearsing all the different things that Paul says here in 2 Corinthians in chapter 6, where he talks about what they endured for the sake of Christ. Just a couple of phrases. Through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as imposters, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, having nothing and yet possessing everything. How do these words fit in following the words about this great exchange that our Lord Jesus has made with us where he has said, I will take the full burden of your sin and you can be clothed in my righteousness. I almost think we need a telestrator like a football game to show how the transfer takes place. Or maybe it's as simple as this. And that transfer went beyond just words for St. Paul to be able to say, I'm different. But everything in his life was different. The burdens that he carried, he was transformed by the power of the grace and the love of Jesus Christ. And he could endure those burdens in a way, fulfilling what Christ would have us do to stand in the gap. As you and I live, as those who have experienced this great exchange, we remember that our lives are not only shaped, but they are made in the image of the one who made us in the first place. We are remade, new life, new power, grace every day for those who sin every day in thought and word and deed. A new beginning as we remember our baptism every day. And perhaps some of us still start our days in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Certainly with a splash of water, we can remember what God has done to make us His. And as we live each day, remembering the tremendous love that our Lord has given to us and how He has carried our burden not so that we can seek some sort of reward from him, but so that others can experience his grace, his love, the face of Christ in us. We seek to carry the burdens of others and so fulfill the law of Christ. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And remember the Redeemer, who has laid claim to you and gives you the promise of the power, the glory, and the victory of his resurrection. In Jesus' name.